Welcome to Edinburgh Airport. Today we're going to be flying to Belfast City and this is my first time ever flying with Aer Lingus and it's also my first time ever flying in an ATR 72 aircraft. Now you might know the ATR 72 is a turboprop powered aircraft, what I call a prop job. And I'm a little bit nervous and I'll tell you why. It's also today when Storm Debbie hits Northern Ireland. So we are potentially going to be flying straight into Storm Debbie. So prop jobs are a little bit shaky at the best of times. So what will it be like flying into the eye of the storm, so to speak? Well, we're here at Edinburgh Airport. Let's go and check in, maybe have a nerve steadying beer first and see how our first flight with Aer Lingus goes. So, fingers crossed, in this video we're going to do the flight from Edinburgh to Belfast City. We're going to stay in Belfast for a couple of nights at the Premier Inn in the Titanic Quarter. Hopefully we'll have time to review the hotel and to have a bit of a walkabout in Titanic Quarter. Then a couple of days later we'll do the return flight from Belfast City to Edinburgh. But first things first, cheers. Yes, definitely need to steady my nerves. Well, we've picked up a delay, 90 minutes. Now, they haven't said whether the delay is a result of Storm Debbie or not, so I don't know whether to feel more nervous or less nervous. Now, this irrational thing that I have about prop jobs, it's not that I don't trust the airlines. I mean, let's face it, they're not gonna do anything stupid. They're not gonna fly in dangerous conditions. But prop jobs fly lower than jet planes, don't they? And I don't like turbulence, and there's always gonna be turbulence during a storm. is here. Let's get on board. Now these ATR 72 planes are unique in that you can only board from the very back. They don't have boarding doors at the front of the aircraft. might be a prop job, but it's a very modern prop job. And because they board you from the back, any business class or premium seating is at the back of the plane. So the best seats are at the back rather than the front. So I've managed to bag myself one of the best seats, 18F, right at the back, which is the equivalent of being right at the front, if you get what I mean. <laughs> These blue leather seats look really smart, don't they? I actually found them very uncomfortable. Only 40 people out of a possible 72 on this flight. And that leg room is very tight, but I guess we're only gonna be on the flight for 40 minutes or so.
was fine. A few lumps and bumps, nothing more. Actually, pretty good flight and only 42 minutes long. Welcome to Belfast. Let's go and find our hotel. Hotel's actually only five minutes away in a cab, so we'll be there in a jiffy. Well, it really was just a two minute cab drive here to the Titanic Quarter here in Belfast. Now I'm staying just over there in the Premier Inn Hotel. I'm gonna give you a room tour of the Premier Inn, but a lot of this vlog's been in the dark so far. And I know there wasn't much to see out of the aeroplane window on the way over. Obviously it was a night flight. Stick with me for the return flight to Edinburgh in a few days time. That will be during the day and there'll be some fabulous views as we head back over to Edinburgh. But what I thought we'd do here before I show you around the Premier Inn Hotel is a quick time jump to tomorrow morning when I'll do a quick walk around here, the Titanic Quarter, just so I can show you something in daylight. So let's go to the future. Welcome to the Titanic Quarter in Daylight. Named, of course, because this was where the famous ship, the Titanic, was built back in the early 1900s. That famous ship that collided with an iceberg in 2012 and sadly sank, taking with it the lives of many, many people. Such a famous story, immortalized in many cinema films. Way back then, this whole area used to be the shipyards of the Harland and Wolfe Shipbuilding Company. What you might not know is that in addition to the Titanic, Harland and Wolfe actually built two sister ships, the Britannic and the Olympic. And they were almost identical to the Titanic in terms of size and luxury. But of course, we never really hear much about the Britannic and the Olympic because it was the Titanic that sank. Actually, Britannic sank as well during World War I, I believe. But Olympic went on to have a long and distinguished career as an ocean liner, pretty much like Titanic was originally meant to do. And that gigantic yellow crane on the horizon still bears the imprint sign of H and W, Harland and Wolf. This whole area is now called the Titanic Quarter and it's effectively an urban regeneration project. And as you'd expect, just like this nomadic ship here, there are lots of relics from those shipbuilding days. And just up here is the centerpiece of the Titanic Quarter. And wow, it is magnificent. This is the Titanic Belfast. Wow, that is impressive, isn't it? Now, Titanic Belfast, as you would expect, is a museum dedicated to the Titanic and its history, but it's also in an exhibition hall with many other facilities. It's a little bit early. I've just gone for a walk first thing in the morning, so we can't go in at the moment, unfortunately, but wow, it looks impressive from the outside, doesn't it? Another view there of that incredible Harland and Wolf gigantic crane. These fascinating maps show the extent of the plan they have here in Belfast for the development of the Titanic Quarter. That's when it all started back in 2012. And that's what they're aiming for, 2030, the completion of the project. 
Titanic Belfast is a perfectly symmetrical shape. Same at the back as it is at the front. And just over there, the Titanic Hotel, built out of some of the old buildings from the shipyard. Probably much more interesting than the Premier Inn Hotel. Talking of which, how about we go back and do that Premier Inn room tour? Welcome back to tonight. Okay, after that little harbour tour, let's head inside the Premier Inn and have a look at our accommodation for the next couple of days. Here we go. Ooh, please tiptoe. And our room is just here, 306. Ah yes, a typical Premier Inn hotel room. <laughs> Plain and basic as a Premier Inn hotel, but it does the job. You only want somewhere to put your head down for a couple of nights, don't you? Pretty decent sized double bed. Quite like those lamps on either side. Fake leather headboard. Bit of decent artwork as well. Comfy chair. There's a nice wee desk, just in case I've got some work to do. A kettle and coffee and tea. Bit of wardrobe space, three hangers is all you get. Extra pillows. And as you would expect, a pretty standard Premier Inn bathroom. We've got a sink, got a mirror, toilet, bath with a shower, the obligatory smelly stuff to keep you nice and clean, topped off with some nice fluffy towels. Yes indeed, this will do nicely for the two nights that I'm here in Belfast. One slight criticism, the whole check-in process was completely automatic. Not one person to be seen, nobody on reception, just a nameless, faceless machine. So it gave me my room number, piece of paper, and my invoice for the two nights, 95 quid a night, and my credit card bill statement. And that was it, all done by machine. Sometimes it's nice to be welcomed. I know these hotels are low cost and they don't go in for that sort of thing, but I don't know, maybe it's just me, whether it's a Premier Inn or a high-end Ritz-Carlton, the personal touch adds so much. Do you agree? Let me know down in the comments what you think about the personal touch in hotels. Breakfast is an extra 10.99 on top of the room rate. Typical breakfast buffet, but the sausages were actually Really delicious. Oh my goodness, I hadn't realised there were actually two of those gigantic Harland and Wolf cranes. Well, a couple of days have gone by. I've had a great visit to Belfast City. The conference that I was speaking at went down really well. It's a beautiful, bracingly cold morning, so I thought we'd walk to Belfast City Airport for our flight back to Edinburgh. Well, after a very long walk with not a lot to see other than motorway, we're here at George Best Belfast City Airport. Let's get on board our Aer Lingus ATR72 for the flight back to Edinburgh. It's an absolutely glorious day, so hopefully we're going to see the sights as we head back home.
right, we've swapped a glorious day in Belfast with an incredibly miserable day here in Edinburgh. Well, we're safely back in Edinburgh city centre. And behind me, you can see they're putting the finishing touches to the Edinburgh Christmas market. I'll probably come back as usual and do a vlog about that. As you know, though, I have some pretty controversial views about Christmas markets. Thank you so much for coming along with me to Belfast. Fascinating to walk around that Titanic quarter and reminisce about those incredible ships. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Until the next video, remember, there's always something to see, so get out there and find it.